I had everything. I didn't know that people live in a different way than I was living. Like, I had everything. I didn't miss anything. Oh, how will you get home? And she was like, can I stay at your place? I was like, Ugh, what? <laughs> I was like, oh, are you sure you want to stay at my place? And she was like, um, yeah, it's okay. So I, I, I was like, I was, okay. She said, it's fine, I'm from Slam, but I was like, okay, so we are going to my place, I'm like scared and stuff. And I think he was a bit nervous about it, but I, I tried my best not to judge him at all. Love as we know it. Have you ever doubted the existence of unconditional love? What if I told you about a woman from Germany who left everything behind, her luxurious life, her dreams, her comfort, to live in Kibera's slums with the man she loves. Yes, you heard that right. She left everything, her future plans, her dreams, all for love. Okay, my name is uh, Lena. I'm from Germany. I'm 24 years old. I'm a social worker and I came to Kenya um, through an internship. I was working in a slum called Kogocho. And yes, I met my husband, Vin, here in Kenya. And he was staying in Kibera, that's where we are right now. And yes, that's how I moved to Kenya. You know, them, they grew up uh, having washroom, like in the house, you don't have to go outside. For me, I have to walk outside at the, in the night. <laughs> so at this night, you know, she wanted to pee. And then <laughs> I was like, I have a bucket here. Yeah, like, <laughs> if you want to lose the bucket. <laughs> I was like, oh my God, no way. <laughs> I was like, shoot, this girl will hate me. Hello, guys. It's your boy Vin here. Uh, Vin, I go by the name Vincent Otieno. Those are my official names. And uh, people call me Vin. Yeah. Or Daddy. Yeah, so, and uh, I'm 23 years old. Yeah. And I'm from Kenya. And uh, I stay in, in Kibero. Mm -hmm. Yeah. In Kenya, I heard about this incredible couple. They live in a tiny room in Kibra, Africa's most insecure place, but her love for him shines through everything. Join me on this journey of their love story. It might just change how you see true love. Meet Vin and Lenny, the couple that's the talk of the town. So uh, I grew up with uh, two brothers, one big brother and a small one. And my parents, they are very protective all the time. We had, uh, we are having a big house together where we are living or where I used to live with my siblings. And yes, I, we are living in a small village. Um, it's a very rural area, a very safe area. And I used to go to primary school in the neighborhood. I used to walk there with my friends alone. And yes, after school, I, uh, after primary school, I went to high school. It was in the bigger city, so I had to go with the bus every day. And yes, after high school, I went to university. I started uh, studying social work. And that's also when I did my internship. And yeah, my, my life, my childhood was very beautiful. I think I was growing up very protected, like very safe. I, I didn't know that people live in a different way than I was living. Like, I had everything, I didn't miss anything. And yeah, maybe I didn't even know how to to appreciate the things I had because they were always there. So I maybe I took them for granted as well sometimes. Yeah, but I can't complain about the way I grew up. Yes. Okay, so for me, when I, when I, when I grew up, it wasn't, it wasn't the be it wasn't fun. Okay, it was fun when I was still young, but uh, it wasn't the best I would wish for kids to grow up, you know, cause uh, growing in the slums, it's not a joke, you know. You lack a lot of things and yeah, no opportunities, no, you don't eat well, like a lot of challenges, you don't go to school well. You know, when you go to school, you're being chased back cause you don't have school fees. Your parents, they don't have good jobs. Like it was, it was tough for me, but uh, I had to adapt and uh, I accept like I went through that. Yeah. Yes, yes, my parents, they had, uh, my parents, both of them, they have a car and we could go everywhere. At the weekends, we went for swimming. We, we went to 
parks. We did a lot of things as families. We went for vacations. Um, my parents, they love to take us to Italy once a year. So we love to travel to Italy once a year. And yes. So for me, like, uh, I, I was, I was, uh, I was that boy. Like when I grew up, I used to see what people are doing, like a lot of crimes in the slums, a lot of drug uh, addicts and stuff. Okay, I used to have friends who I went to school with. Some of them, they were drug addicts. Some of them, they were doing bad stuff, you know. And some of them were even killed, you know, because they were, they were doing crimes and stuff. And some of them, they are still not uh, in a good situation mentally because they are using a lot of drugs. But uh, for me, I didn't want that life, you know. And uh, I was trying, like, I started dancing. I was playing football first, and then I, I stopped. I started dancing and I would say dancing helped me a lot to not be swallowed by this uh, kind of things and pressure in, in the slum. But uh, yeah, I would say I started dancing. I started seeing uh, life out there, you know, something that's that I can't see in the slum. And uh, I was like, you know, that's what I want. I want to be I want to be somewhere. I want to live in this good house. I want to. I want to look good, I want to be like these kids, because I used to see kids out there, like they are from rich backgrounds, and I was dancing with them, and they are like, oh, you're a good dancer, and I'm like, yes, you know, like, they gave me, like, they gave me an opportunity there, and I, that's, that's how I, I escaped that, yeah. So yeah. You, you can say that talent or dancing, okay, or maybe be busy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, escape the crimes, yeah. Yeah. That's a good, uh, that's a good idea. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I've had been the first weekend when I arrived. Oh. Uh, so it, I was in Kenya for like two or three days and I met him. I'm on the stage with my mask, dancing, you know. And then I was, I was shirtless and I was wearing something and, uh, I saw, I saw, I saw this girl dancing, and I was like, oh, okay. Yeah, so Vin is a dancer, so I met him at a dance event. He was performing there. Yes, and it was uh, crazy because I experienced Kokochu, and then I went to the other side. I, I old in Kenya in Nairobi, you can also see like uh, the rich people and how they're living. So I, I met him there, and it was, it was really crazy and exciting. <laughs> you know, there are a lot of girls, yes, but uh, have like I saw Lenny's vibe and uh, yeah, the energy just uh, attracted me to her and of which I, I was attracted in a dancing way, not like I wasn't thinking, oh, uh, something crazy. But uh, yeah, we started dancing and she was like, oh, can I see your face? I was like, no. You can't see my face. No, it was like I'm at work. I can't remove it. Maybe, maybe later, or maybe you take my Instagram pictures to see my face. And I was like, just that's what I'm going to ask. And I was like ask, asking her, if you want to see my face, come with me to the to the backstage. I show you my face. And she was like, no, I don't trust strangers. You know, it's my first time here. I was like, okay, it's fine. But even me, I'm working. I can't remove my mask here. That okay. Vin was wearing a mask as he was performing and he, we were dancing and vibing and uh, first of all he was at the stage, they did their performance and everything and later they came and entertained uh, with people um, and he was wearing this mask and at the beginning like he were, we were dancing and everything and then he was asking if he can have my Instagram and he was wearing a mask and I didn't want to, I was just new in this country so I was a bit shy and and I didn't see his face. Like, I didn't want to give my Instagram to someone. I don't see the face. So I was like, no, no. And then he was like, okay, okay, no worries. He was not pressuring me at all. He was really respectful. So he was like, okay, I will go home. Maybe we see each other another day. But Nairobi is big. And I felt like, oh my God, I won't see him again if I don't take this opportunity. So I went back, I ran, and I got his Instagram before he left. It was really close. So, yeah, like it was like that, and I was like, okay, maybe I get your Instagram, and she was like, no, like, so I was like, okay, it's fine. Mm -hmm. I went back to dancing, and then 
after I finished, I remember I went to change and I, I removed the mask and then I was standing there waiting for my friends. We go home. So she came to me and then she was like, okay, so let's do that. <laughs> let's do that thing. <laughs> Yes, that's, that's I felt like, uh, I don't know, like, I really felt connected from day one. I don't know why. <laughs> no, I, I just, I just liked this energy. So um, I felt like I have to go and get this Instagram. I never felt like this before, but I felt like, oh my God, I can't let him go. So I was like, oh, okay, <laughs> well, don't go far. Uh, why, why don't you remove the mask? Because I was working and I was not supposed to remove it there. I was still working. It was not allowed? No, it wasn't allowed. Why? Because we were working and we were supposed to have the mask and no. I follow rules. So I was like, okay. So that it was that rule? Mm -hmm. Like you are told that you were People are not supposed mask. to see your face because you're still, you're there. You're, you're supposed to be like that until you finish. That's when you can remove the mask. That's yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was crazy. It was crazy. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, when I saw her coming back, I was like, uh, oh, first, I I just had someone talking to me. I didn't know she was coming because I was waiting. I was facing this side, and my friends were coming from that side. So I had someone tapping me and talking to me. I was like, oh, oh. I was like, oh, okay, it's you again. Huh? Uh, she was like, oh, so this is how you look. I was like, yeah, that's how. <laughs> I was like, okay, we get you get the Instagram then. Like, thank you. <laughs> Good. Yes. She has to see the face. Yeah. I think she wanted to see my face first. If I'm what the Instagram thing. <laughs> thing. But yeah, I think I was. So I got her Instagram and I asked her if she got home. And we went from there. Because he was about to leave. Like, he was already at the exit. So, and your head already changed and everything. <laughs> yes, I think he was happy. He was smiling and... Yes, and then we started texting. For Lenny, it was love at first sight, but the real challenge? Bringing her into his world in the slums. Imagine introducing the person you love to a life in one of Africa's most dangerous slums. A single room serving as a kitchen, bedroom, and living area. No shower, no toilet. I asked Vin, what went through your mind bringing her to your home for the first time? So for me, like, it was tough because I, 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 when when I, I I didn't have that uh, self confidence that much because I was scared because I was meeting people like they are they are rich like they I was hanging out with Life people felt. yes yes and me telling them I'm from Kibera it they they it lowers my value and they're like no you're not from Kibera you're lying no like no one could believe I'm I'm staying in the slum no one you know so I when I met her, I was like oh man like. What like what will she think? I'm coming from the slum, and but I was like, okay, it's fine. I mean, she takes it how she wants. So I was like, me first thing I told her, I stay in the slum. So I was waiting to see her, like, oh, I don't do slum, guys. <laughs> but yeah, she was like, it's okay, you know. Oh my god, yeah. so I was shocked. I was shocked. It's so hard to like this generation mostly, like people they judge you from where you're coming from and. I'm proud, actually. I'm proud of uh, growing up in the slum, and uh, he taught me a lot, and uh, I'm, I'm proud of that, yeah. Okay. And Lenny, what went through your mind seeing the harsh realities of slum life where your man lives? Okay, um, first of all, um, yeah, I was a bit shocked because, um, not because, okay, somehow also because of the way people are living there, but also there are so many kids, they have so much potential, they are so talented and they are not getting the the right education, the, they are not getting opportunities and I I felt so bad for those kids because these kids, they, they, they didn't decide where to grow up and it's not fair. I felt like life is not fair, the world is not fair, so that was the hardest thing that these kids, even though they are super intelligent, they have crazy talents, like they, they didn't get the right opportunities just because of the way they grew up or the circumstances they're in. I was like, she, this girl will hate me. I was like, she was so pressed, she wanna pee, but she can't go outside because it's still risky, you know? And I was like, you, you, there's a bucket there, that's, my, that's the washroom, you can use it. 
Yeah, so it was like that, and she 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 loved it. herself. Yeah, there's this shower here in the slum as well, and uh, I was like, okay, so this is our shower, and and she was like, what? You know, it was it was crazy. Yeah, so yeah, like shower, shower, taking a shower, and like a lot of things was. And I think he was a bit nervous about it, but I. I tried my best not to judge him at all. Today marks a significant chapter in their journey. We're walking miles on foot through the slums to meet Vin's parents. It's a world away from the streets of Germany and Italy that Lenny knew. No hotels, no manicured parks. Their dates are unlike any in the Western world. No fancy restaurants or scenic parks. Just the lively streets of Cabrera and local street food, just the raw, unfiltered reality of life here. Now let's step out into the slum, walks through the busy streets attracting curious glances, and Lenny enjoys every bit of it, embracing her new life. Hey, Vin, thank you for coming. Yeah. Hey, good, good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. How have you been? Thank you so much. Are you well? Yes. Are you okay? Yes, really. Feel at home. Yeah. Thank you so much for coming. Yeah. Yes. I wanted to tell you something. Yes. So, this is Gina. Yes. My girlfriend. Yeah. Yeah. So, From which country? On Germany. Thank you. Thank you so much. That was that. Ah, thank you. I'm Vin Dutz. Thank you for coming. Yes. Uh, so, I really appreciate what you have done. Can I bless you? Yes. yes. Thank you. Oh, Father, our Lord, we thank you so much for this house. I blessed him. I had blessed all of them to come here and see me again. So, may let them come again and come and see me and meet me. Thank you so much for if you are coming. Thank you so much. Father, may God bless you so much and come again. Thank you, Rina and Dorota from Germany. This is, you always come to Kenya. This is Kenya. You are happy to come here? Yes. Ah, good. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, so you came to Kibera and, uh, and then? Um, actually, we came, we came and ate dinner together here at a Kibandaski, at a local place. And then I went to his place and I already slept there. <laughs> what, 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 what did you eat? Uh, chapati and beans. Chapati and beans. You already knew chapati and beans? Yes. Okay, and then he took you to his house. Yes. And you slept? Yes. Oh my God. So that's it? Yes. Fantastic. Then now he came out to, to show you the parents. The... Yes, like a, a few weeks later he introduced me to his dad. I took tea with him, we talked. And that was like happy yeah. with you. Okay, what about okay, what about the family of yours in Germany? Uh I remember I called my mom and I was just smiling and my mom asked me what happened? Did you feel did you fall in love? I was like, Yes, and, and she was like he he's from Kenya and I'm like, Yes, and she's like, Oh, as long as you're happy, I'm so happy for you. Yes, yes. They didn't like me moving here because they want to have me around. They really wish Vin and me would move <laughs> to Germany so we were closer. But they're always telling me as long as I'm happy, they're happy. They're happy. That's fantastic. Lenny's adaptation to slum life wasn't easy. Confronting diseases like malaria, no clean water, and the harsh Kenyan sun. But she's brave. A true hero of love. Her family supports her choice, even though they'd prefer her to be in Germany. But for her, she found a new family in the slum, caring for children and dreaming of making a change. Yeah, I felt like life is not fair. The world is not fair. So that was the hardest thing that these kids, even though they are super intelligent, they have crazy talents, like they, they didn't get the right opportunities just because of the way they grew up or the circumstances they're in. Yes, the world could be different, uh, like, especially for them, like uh, like they could be super successful, they could, I, I feel like 
there are talents that are wasted because we, we need intelligent people, we need engineers, we need entertainers, we need everything and those kids, they, they are just not seen. They're not seen by the world, so it's not fair. She sacrificed her comfortable life for love, not just for Vin, but for the whole community. In this community, Lenny found a new purpose. She cares for children, helping to unearth the hidden talents swallowed by the slums. She's not just living here, she's making a tangible impact. She has a message to the world. Chase love, not material wealth. It's the most important thing in life. Yeah, uh, for, for, like that's really something people are struggling with, I would tell. And uh, you shouldn't be ashamed of where you're coming from. Whether you're from the slum or wherever, like you shouldn't be scared, you know, let people like lo love you or like you the way you are, you know, and accept uh, who you are. And uh, you shouldn't be scared to to say you're from from this background or anything like that, or from this tribe. You shouldn't be scared, you know, because uh, at the end of the day, uh, that's who you are. People might fall in love with, the, you know, you might fall in love with a, a a rich girl or a rich man, but you don't want to tell them like you're from this shallow background or anything. But it, it's not about where you're coming from, you know, it's about how you feel and uh, yeah, your connection and yeah, your values, yeah. As we witness their love story, let's vow to make our love unbreakable, a shield against life's uncertainties, a guide to brighter places. Technology and climate may change the world, but the strength of true love remains unshaken. Yeah, if you if you want to check out our channel, we would be really happy. The name is Vin and Leni. And yes, you're very welcome. We, we are happy about everyone who's joining our YouTube family. We, we love everyone who's watching, who's supporting. So you're very welcome to check our YouTube channel. Um, people can support us through PayPal. Some they have our bank accounts. Some they're sending through M-Pesa. So it depends. They're reaching out to us. And some they're telling us this is for you guys. And some they're telling us do something with the kids. Uh, we have everything on our YouTube. It's in the description. Yes, if you want you, we appreciate everyone who's supporting us, who's supporting the kids, who's supporting the journey. Maybe one day when we can raise enough funds, we can start the organization. So if you want to, we appreciate all the support. Finding true love is rarer than the rarest diamond. Remember, your heart is the most precious treasure. Never hesitate to follow it. Thanks for watching. I am Jordan Sullivan, and this is Aframax English. Please remember to subscribe.